I like to walk around a bit, but I'm kind of afraid that the whole setup is going to implode on us. So, um, so yeah, uh, we're here today to talk about um, developing a viral video. Um, before we get started, um, I think some introductions are in order. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one with that. Um, yeah. So, uh, my name is Frank Masinski. I work for Strategic Images. It's uh, for a brand new advertising firm downtown. Um, I've been with the team for about a year now. I was brought on board to do um, a lot with social media and emerging media. And one of the things that um, I work with is um, is online internet ready video. Um, Jesse, my uh, friend and colleague, um, helps us put together some of this stuff. Jesse, can you want to say something about yourself? Yeah, um, most Halloweens and most days of the year, I do like to uh, wear a cheerleader's outfit, but uh, not today. <laughs> Um, my name is Jesse Kalazi. Uh, I'm a freelance a video guy. I also teach um, video production and editing and all kinds of video stuff at Point Park. Um, I've been self-employed for quite a while, but um, also one of the things is uh, I produce um, Hometown High Q, which is a quiz game show on our local CBS affiliate here. So, um, Saturday at 11. <laughs> Yes. Hey, come on, guys. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're fine. All right, cool. Thanks, man. All right. So uh, just to give you a disclaimer. We have a lot of video in this. Um, we might skirt through some of the things that you've definitely seen, but just kind of set the tone for everything. Who remembers this video? Yeah, it's kind of annoying, right? Um, but one of the misnomers that we um, come across a lot when we talk about viral video and social media in general is that this is a completely new thing. That YouTube was only invented in 2005, Facebook's only been around just as long, Twitter's a, a new beast. Um, but really these, these mediums have been around for a while. This video came out in 1996, 1997 and was spread uh, via email. Um, if you do social media as a whole, that's been around since basically humans can communicate. It's just that the internet and the advent of, of these new um, these new, new tools make this stuff um, more, more powerful, it can reach more people um, at a much quicker rate than you could in the past. And, and so like, I think it's important like th at this point, think about this video, maybe think about like the spirit of Christmas, you know, the thing that it was also a viral video that launched South Park into what it is today. Uh, you know, what is viral video? I'd kind of like to have a little discussion uh, with you guys. And maybe you can shout out some of your ideas, like what do you think viral video is? What is it? Yeah, it's just a piece of video that spreads like a virus from person to person to person, you know, exponentially. Yeah, right. So, like, the, the word viral is talking about how it spreads a lot. And so people obviously, like, throw that in there because it describes what they want. Maybe it's not necessarily what, um, what you take into consideration up front. What else, what else goes into, like, what, what else thoughts come to mind when you think about what viral video is? That's good. Yeah. Entertaining. Yeah, it's entertaining. Very much so. What else? What else do you like from about viral video? Because that also helps define what it is. Not very rarely uh, done deliberately. Yes. Yes. It, um, you raise a good point, maybe indirectly, but he says very rarely done deliberately. Um, we will um, or does talk it look about like that. It What's that? Or it doesn't look like it was done. Or it's made to look like it was not deliberate sometimes, too. Well, I'm, I'm not saying that the video itself, like Jeff, Jeff really didn't intend to go viral when he started throwing stuff up on uh, YouTube. Okay. But he right. hit a nerve. Right. And a lot of times maybe emotion is one of those things. Mm -hmm. We had another one we wanted to show. Oh, we have a couple, actually. Yeah. Just to kind of set the tone. Oh. Not the Bachaka. I'm going with Bachaka. You guys know what this. You don't even have to see the video to know what this video wow, is like. That's know. hilarious. Yeah, and like this guy, you know, it was it was not very deliberate that he wanted to make a video that was gonna like become amazing someday. But you know, obviously, this is like I think one of the you know we think of viral video. I think this is one of the ones that comes to at least my mind first. What's the next one? This one. You know, oh uh, Charlie. I have to play some Charlie. Yeah. Charlie. Charlie's me. What, what about that? What, like, what, what's, 
funny about this video? Like, why is this like everyone knows Charlie bit me? Everyone knows who Charlie is. Like, what what is it with that video that made it viral? You kids sell. Yeah. And what and what else what else can we say about it? I mean, it's cute kids. So I mean, that's that's an important thing. Yeah. You can see your own kids. Yeah. Your kids have certainly done something like that, or you've done something like that as a kid. Yeah. And or as a so <laughs> It's just it's just a simple moment that we happen to just cling to, you know. For next example. Uh, Sometimes things are just so weird, you have to like, it's like the grotesque is sometimes the things that we cling to, you know? What was the, what was the name of this one? That was, that was, what was it? That? Numa, 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 Numa guy. Numa, yeah. Numa, yeah. Numa, yeah. And I mean, everybody has done like their responses to that, for better or for worse. Really, those are all basically home videos, but another thing that, um, that the internet really kind of started to pioneer and started to, um, really benefit was um, the expansion of broadcast media and other um, uh, other more traditional forms. Um, right here, how do we get a million people to see our you news as opposed to right? just our, our major and national winner, market? This Saturday, who stomps the most Jews will actually win an overnight stay in Stockholm. You ready? Ready to try it? Yeah, sure. What's great about this video is I mean, right, 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 what's a about to happen. We all, we, everybody's not so seen this video before. Let's watch it. Let's watch it. There's a contest to stomp, and how are you measuring who does the best stomping? Whoever stomps the most shoots wins an overnight stay, but it's not the only thing you can do. The best thing you can do is to double up. The best thing you can do is to double up. And if you win, you get to stay in Chateau de Milan, and what else do you have going on here? Well, the great stomping point of the thing, you can come and spend the day listening to live music. Having wine tours and tasting, vineyard tours, seminars, arts and crafts. It's a lot of fun, a whole day. Stop. Oh, 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 stop.
not a home, I want you to check this out. Two receivers, two footballs, one choice.
to um, establish some sort of a brand. But there's a method to the madness, right? There's, there's things that we need to do. How do we break through the clutter? There's um, over 600 years of YouTube video posted on YouTube. How do we become something that's a little bit different? Um, what was that? Watch it all. Watch it all. <laughs> pick out the ones that... Pick out the good ones. Pick, pick out the good ones. Um, but there's a method to um, our madness and the mad madness. We broke it down into five steps. Um, and we'll, we'll, of course, we'll go over these in a second. Um, define, brainstorm, plan, execute, and deliver. Let's start, get started with... Oh, well, before we get started, um, it's, it's important to front load this a little bit with, with some information, yeah. too. Like, there's a lot of variables that are out of, outside of your control when you're trying to um, you know, have a very successful online video. Um, you know, a little bit earlier we said there's a little bit of luck involved. You have to reach the right people at the right time um, and have the right message that people are going to forward on. That's the, the beauty of, of viral video is that it's, anyone can um, you know, get a, a million hits, um, but it's, it's very difficult to do it. Um, you also have to establish some realistic expectations. Um, you all have a lot of things going on. You might only have a little bit of time to dedicate to coming up with the concept and filming and all that kind of stuff. You might decide that you want to quit your job and do this full time. It's, it's up to you. Um, you have limited resources above time. Um, what kind of money do you have to spend? Um, what kind of help you have? That kind of stuff. Skill level. Um, you can have someone that is a lot of, a lot of experience in production, um, like Jesse, or someone that you know, has a flip cam like myself. It, it kind of all depends on that. Um, and don't overpromise and underdeliver. I'm assuming that there's some of you out there that um, you might be doing this for your company or for a client um, or even for yourself. Um, you know, you can promise things like creativity, quality, variety, um, string together a bunch of content. Some things that you can't promise necessarily are hits, views, and visits. It's something you want to be very careful about. Um, that this, this is a promise that's really hard to keep. So my, my favorite thing to do anytime I start any project, some kind of nuts like that, is um, to really set down and do some definition of what the heck you're doing. Um, Come up with that idea. Yeah, with, with that idea, like you have an idea to do something, or you have an objective out there that you want to uh, be filmed for. You have to figure out who your target audience is. That's going to help you a lot when you start to brainstorm and come up with content and that kind of stuff. You're going to have a purpose to your video. Um, are you going to be informing someone? Um, are you just going to be entertaining or are you just going to have your kids do random stuff until you find something that sticks? Um, or are you promoting something? Are you doing this actually for a business and you want to um, get people to come to an event? Um, and this is all driven by that end goal. Are you driving your traffic? Are you selling a widget? Or are you monetizing video? Are you trying to package this and sell advertising? Yeah, you really want to use it um, with you know not only the initial uh, concept in mind that you have, but you know what, what is the purpose? And ask yourself that. Is it simply to drive somebody to a website? Is it to get somebody to donate something? Is it to get somebody to you know become interested in what you do, or simply for the benefit of buzz even? Uh, but always know like what is that? Because that's going to dictate a lot about how you package it and what your message ends up being. Uh, and this is my favorite step out of all of it. Um, is brainstorming. This is something that's like it's it's overlooked a lot when people are coming up with concepts. The fact that I have an idea, I'm just going to go shoot it. But you know. Of, of that great idea, there might be something that's even better. There might be something that's more geared toward those goals that you just established. So sit down with a dry erase board or um, you know, a sketch pad or, or whatever it may be, with a group of friends, and uh, put on your thinking caps. Uh, develop that content, um, the concept, and what kind of technique you're going to use. Um, also, look at what you already have. You might already have um, a large social media base that you can use to promote. And that door is loud, man. Um, you might already have some video that you can repackage and edit. Um, a lot of this um, relies on some of the, the clever editing that you can do. Um, and what other resources do you have to play around with? I think the big, the big thing is also is um, people often, uh, and, and maybe, maybe the, the, this idea could be changing too overall. People think web video is just web video. Um, and you know the really important stuff are those thirty-second commercials that are really w well polished that run you know on Hulu before your show begins or whatever. And that's actually uh, I think not true. And maybe you guys will agree with me that you know video that's on the web, no matter what it is, sticks around forever. And if, if this is video with a very specific purpose, like for branding of a client of yours, or for yourself, or for a company you work for, you, know, you want to think about you know this is going to be around. For 
forever. Um, what do I need to do right now so that 10 years from now, when this resurfaces again, is it something that like we can stand behind? You know, right? Or is it like we're going to cringe every time we see it? You know? Just going to explain? Yeah. Um, okay. So, video is in the original work. All right. I think it's pretty much understood that everybody wants to know video. We got like almost a full room here. All right. You've got to understand a couple of things about it. Writing is, is always going to be very important. And understanding not only like how to make words show up on a page or to get an idea across using the uh, vocabulary of video, but making a message and having a good idea and having a way that gets the message across in a crafty way. Like that Dove ad, you know, like not, it's, somebody can just stand up on a uh, webcam and you know, have it lit and look like it's three o'clock in the morning and that they're up all night with their video blog talking about how, you know, well, I can't believe we base our perception of beauty off of distorted images. Or you could do what they did. So it's, it's this concept that's followed up with a nice plan and a story structure. Um, believe it or not, uh, that, that Dove, you can use that Dove ad as an example, followed the classic structure that movies follow, plays follow, any kind of novel follows. Come in. Welcome. Hey. It's a three-act structure. In the very beginning, um, you know, had um, kind of introduced you to the situation of a, a model sitting down. And um, when they flick those lights on, you kind of realize this is a photo shoot. And that middle act was that rise of action, you know. They started to you know, do her up and, uh, you know, air makeup her and do her hair. And Even then, the tempo of the video started speeding up. It that started climax speeding up. It, it, what's going on. It, it had a rise of action. And then, of course, the climax, I think, or the at least that transition into the third act, which is the, the climax, was the actual, you know, <laughs> the, the camera doing its thing. And then, you know, it showed you Photoshop. And they were stretching her out, making her eyes look bigger and all that stuff. And that very end point was pulling away. Billboard, you know. Um, so thinking about structure, you know, a beginning and a middle and an end is important, and uh, especially if it's something that you're fabricating. Uh, you know, most people don't just go around with a camera at large waiting for little kids to do funny things. Um, nobody has the budget for that. Nobody has the time for that. You need to have a little bit more control of what you're doing. And so, um, being able to structure something that is a message that's clearly put together and well put together and clever. Um, it's important because you're you're not dealing with just like oh it's just going to happen in my living room tonight whatever it is you have a blank slate you have the proverbial empty sound stage that you need to fill with props and with things it's not just going to happen how's everyone doing so far cool. good questions I, I mean I feel like we're like right around the midway point I just want to check in we haven't had a fun video or funny picture in about three minutes and that's a little too long for me but. it is too long for me awesome cool. Oh, this is informative so far. Oh yeah, um, you're actually going to have to need to film this thing after you do all this planning. <laughs> um, the technique really depends on the type of content that you're going to be filming. Um, but the really cool thing about it is that, um, as we saw in a lot of examples, simplicity translates so well to online video. Um, and, and to that end, there's so many um, inexpensive resources to actually do the filming. Flip cams, Film in HD now. There, what was the price point on now? One hundred fifty dollars sure, for a little flip cam. But it's like you know, back in the eighteen fifties, you know, the Colt forty five was the great equalizer. It made everybody on the same, you know, page. I think the internet and being able to have really accessible communication tools is our Colt forty five of today. And and you know, I I kind of had a thought that maybe at this point you'd have some questions about like maybe trying to start up your own little, you know. Do your own web video, what kind of tools you might want, and I'm happy to talk about that right now if you guys want to. Um, when it talks about you know what kind of camera maybe you want, maybe think about cameras or something like that, or you have a budget, um, what to edit with, and um, that last little bit right there, sound. Um, most people forget the fact that audio is like 90% of any good video. Um, you can't. You can't just go with a camera microphone and accept that mic from across the room to sound good. People are going to be thrown out immediately. They're going to be turned off by it if it's not what it should be. Granted, Charlie getting bit should sound like a, a home video camera, but say, you know, something that's more polished. 
any other kind of commercial, it should sound, it should have the realism that it needs, you know. Um, a little analogy I always tell my students is, you can close your eyes and the pictures go away, but the sound is still there. You can go in the other room and start to prepare dinner, and the sound is still there. You might not see it. The sound obviously has a, has a lot of it. So, so in other words, you're better off with 15 frames per second in great audio than, than 60 frames per second in choppy audio. Uh, yeah, and let me put it to you this way. Your, your ears are way more sensitive to what they do than your eyes are sensitive to. I think people are going to be more tolerant of crappy video, so to speak, than of crappy sound. And you should um, pick up some resources and teach yourself about fuel audio. Uh, I'm a sound guy, you know, at heart. And so I'm a little biased, yeah. But I do know that the difference between something that makes me lose myself in it and something that, you know, makes me think like, oh, this is amateur work and, you know, maybe it's a luck, maybe it's hit or miss, maybe it's real, maybe it's not is the sound quality. And you should really think about, you know, getting a good recorder and good microphone set. Yeah. So, if we're buying, like, I know nothing about sound. A flip camera thing, is that, are there numbers? Like, what, I know with cameras, you know, my kids or whatever, will tell me, get this, get this, get this. What do, how do we know, can you give us some ideas of what's good enough? Well, yeah, and, and you know, like, um, basic understanding of the sound is, like, having the microphone being close to the sound source is um, if, if it's you talking on camera, pick a room not like this one. Pick a room that is a little bit deader, doesn't have a lot of echoes, and um, make, try to have it be a quiet place, you know. If you can hear somebody in your neighborhood in the background banging a large nail over and over and <laughs> over again, that's going to be very distracting, and it's, it's, it's going to take away from your message unless it's part of the story, and then you may want to think about just recording that and adding it later. So pick a quiet place. Yeah. But you know, yeah, I've got a real good mic. I think I got a few recommendations from the Jack Smith, uh, what uh, the Austin is supposed to be good. Uh, but I didn't see much, you know, much difference in quality of recording. So maybe I should use like amplifier or something like that. Or what, I mean, what's wrong with that? Um, well, it depends on where it is. Um, you, know, you can have a, a golden microphone, and if you're trying to record something, you know, from 20 feet away. Right here, yeah. If it's close, it should be yeah. good. And, you know, that's, that's the big thing. And, you know, for somebody who's a novice or new to this, you know, I wouldn't recommend, like, getting caught up in getting, like, the latest, greatest Sennheiser, you know, shotgun microphone. I'd, I'd think about using tools that are more accessible to you in a way that's just proper. You know, try to, you know, have a Fisher Price mic, but actually mic some like this. You can actually, you know, have it be right there. You know, if it's close enough, then you're good. If you can have a nice crisp sound, you just don't want that, like, you know, from across the room kind of sounding thing, which you can't fix. So the microphone should be fine, right? Yeah, yeah, as long as it's right there, you know, if it's your voice you're recording, I'm guessing. Yeah, it's not like you indicated using a separate digital audio recorder and well, uh, mix them later. In the film world, there's a thing called the dual system. Um, you know, this is this is it, it stems out of like a you know a, a movie kind of production workflow where the film doesn't record sound; it records the image. So you needed a separate system to record that sound, and that's where that like they have a clapboard, you know, and all that kind of thing. And um, if you have like a flip camera, you know, th there's no real good way to plug an external mic into that. And the onboard mic sucks. It's great for home videos, and it's great for showing things. I think it's really they've come a long way with their picture quality. Um, but uh, a little um, a, a recorder that allows you to either put the recorder close up and not have it be intrusive looking, um, or uh, something that allows you to record off of a um, like an externally plugged in microphone. Uh, Zoom. If you have like three or four hundred bucks to spend, maybe you do, maybe you don't. But Zoom is a company that makes um, hand recorders. They're great, like an H4n and stuff like that. Um, a lot of my buddies who shoot big documentaries will shoot, you know. The, the, the image part would be like on a digital SLR or something like that, but they'll they'll record on a dual system and use a zoom recorder with mics plugged into it. Um, or you can um, be close. Be uh, if this is something where it's somebody's image and you know, it's like a talking head. Be in a quiet place and be close with that flip camera. Um, thing I, I, I just don't like flip cameras because of the uh, sampling rate of the audio. Is too 
Can you be close enough if you're using it to take a picture also? Well, it depends. I mean, you know, if you're like doing like a podcast or like a video uh, diary online, you can be right about here and be within a couple of feet to where it's not that. And you're trying to like make it best, best possible practices because not everybody's got a $500 budget to, you know, rent a sound man. And You know, I it, it, it's a it's a, such a case by case kind of thing, but I can kind of guess what you're talking about. A loud event, and um, you're just it's looking for picture. Event. Are people speaking that you want to hear, or is no, it? I just want like the runway fashion show. pictures. I I I would suggest that yeah. you know, and even if you want to like lay in something later, or you could find a different song or something. Are you editing in like a, a software or some kind of computer I've never app? Done yeah, I move for for one single track audio. iMovie is good. Windows Movie Maker, you know, stuff like that. And really, you can edit the video down to a frame of detail, and you can have one track of sound. Um, when you start to want to get into mixing things, well, then you run into needing multiple tracks, and then you get into money. But yeah, I mean, you know, you can think about just deleting the the what came with it. That's a simple approach. Yeah. You fight over it. Do a voiceover description. A voiceover. Um, you can, you can do that later using the camera just as a microphone in a closet space um, with a lot of linens hanging in it. Um, I also have suggested if you have a, a garage and a quiet neighborhood um, in your car, in your garage, um, believe it or not, you, you're in a box in a box and the car doesn't have many parallel walls. So you're not going to get a lot of reverb. So it's going to make the most out of a crappy mic. It's going to take a crappy mic and do the best you can with it. So if you're using a flip camera, you, you don't have to just be using it as a video camera. You could go into a really quiet, not echoey place and um, just use it as a microphone. You know, put your hand in front of it or an index card so you can you know, know, oh, you know, and dry a little picture of a microphone so you know this is voiceover. And you could read your, you know, you can read into it and use it as a microphone, nice and close. I'd say a crappy mic close is better than a, you know, $3,000 mic that's not used properly. Uh, I think that's a really good thing, but sound is just so key. Um, you know, when somebody's walking outside and you don't hear the crunch of their feet, it throws you out of, it, it puts you back in reality. That suspension of disbelief is gone. What else? I, there were two questions over here. I don't know if I... I'm just gonna, I, I saw somewhere uh, in a couple of video uh, catalogs where something called a telescoping mic that's built into the camera, mm -hmm. whereas you would zoom, I guess, the audio. I don't know how that works, or... Well, it, 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 from what I, I don't, I've never used one, but my, um, from what I've heard is it kind of has blockers that move around it to cut off sound coming from all directions. It, it's a more directional kind of mic as opposed to an Omni, but, um, you know, if it works, cool. Uh, it's, it's tough to get good sound without having at least the know-how of how it works. You can use, you can use crappy tools, just knowing how to make the most of them. 
input on your camera, any little handy cam should have an external mic input. Like something in the you know mid hundreds range that you bought would have something. And so I, I think about it. But sound is key. If there are any other questions, though, we've got plenty more to move on. I, if, I, yeah. uh, if, if I want to take the answers because there's like incredible dancers there, but I want to play it sideways, is there any like website I can go to that will actually play it sideways? Because when you try to like put it in HD, they're actually smaller, right? So if I shot it sideways, you can see. Oh, so for a, a tall yeah, video. Yeah, tall. Yeah, is there any website that actually plays it that way? You know, um,
obviously there's so many ways to um, to post it. So you know, whatever medium, I I use YouTube all the time, but I know there's a lot of other um, great um, videos. Vimeo is good. Yeah, Vimeo. I like Vimeo a lot too. Yeah. Um, but we actually just um, sat in on an SEO session. One of the things a lot of people forget is they kind of glance over the tags they let, um, you know, whatever program it is, just kind of um, set the keywords and that's that. But one of the things that's really interesting about um, you know, posting your video online is that these sites, the YouTubes, the Vimeos, um, they're all search en engines in and of themselves. So in order to like really kind of um, like stand out in the crowd, um, you want to find that niche. Like you want to find that those people that want that that specific content. So be careful with your keywords um, and choose things that are unique, specific, and useful, and um, will generate those hits. Um, don't forget to cross promote. Um, it's been two days of pod camping, and uh, we've heard a lot about social media. Um, and online video is turning into a social media tool in and of, in and of, of itself, um, with all the different ways that you can um, you know, post and respond to a video. You can do video responses. It's sort of turning into its own social media tool. And, and, and to jump in on that too, you know, I mean, YouTube is definitely the McDonald's of of web video distribution. Right. Um, but I do have to say, it's really easy to link it with every other social networking community that you're a part of, be it Twitter or Facebook or whatever. And embedding on websites and in your blog and all yeah. that stuff. There's, there's no reason why you shouldn't use the power of whatever network you're part of, whether it be Facebook or Twitter or any of the other um, big guys or small guys out there um, to, promote, to promote a video and give that extra boost that you might need. Um, we, we touched upon this a little bit. Um, you know, regular content development. If you have an idea, see if you can stream that across a series, a series of videos. Or, um, you know, the more content you have out there, oh, we really don't like to use the word synergy because it's very like 1998. Um, but they really, if you have a good video and you have a great video, that great video is going to drive the traffic to that good video. And it, it really kind of works out that way. Um, and then don't forget to measure how you did. We set goals way back in the beginning of the presentation. Um, a lot of people just like deliver it and say, okay, well, I got a thousand hits. Look back at what your goals actually were. Was it to get a thousand hits? Was it to drive traffic to your website? Was it to sell you know, whatever widget you have? It was to get out of tune. That's my right. goal. Answer. So, like, measure it. Figure out what, <laughs> what happened. <laughs> Maybe some other stuff, but. Do you guys have any more questions? Yeah, I'd rather kind of like run with your QA. The QA was awesome. That's exactly what we wanted. We don't like to do this whole. Talk. I feel like the brothers from the Step Brother <laughs> <laughs> uh, gave the presentation <laughs> crash. Yeah. yeah. I asked another presenter, do you still think that uh, even though there's a lot of video out there, it's still underused on the internet? It's good videos. It doesn't good. get noticed. Yeah. Is that what your question is? It's, it's still underutilized as far as you look at the kids. It captures the uh, marketplace. It's room for video out there. It's being underutilized. Good video. I, I think there's plenty of room for good video. And, and I have to say, you know, there's, there's no substitute for quality. Everyone's goal, especially folks who are just entering um, the world of careers, you know, like maybe younger folks or people who are, you know, maybe mid-career changing into a more communication-based way of making a living. Um, you got to know video, and, and really, you should know it well, because even if you want your video to look amateur, it takes a lot of control to do that consistently in a way that you can charge money for. You know, I mean, or, or in a way that you can actually put, F, put, put confidence in that I'm branding myself if you're doing it for yourself well, or I'm branding my boss's company in a way that I should be. If, um, if you want it to look grassroots, you should learn the proper technique, you should learn film. You don't, and, and you don't have to like go to film school to do this, watch movies and be a critic and, 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 and view those movies that are directed by the greats as um, people who could be mentoring you and guide, or guide for you. You know, how did Kubrick do this? You know, watch Spielberg movies and think about some of those um, cuts that Spielberg does where it goes from one piece of video to another clip that's the same framing but a different character in a different time in a different location and how they bridge those things together. Just like the dub ad, a very simple way of joining things together uh, would be good. Study film and, and get to know how it's done in a very polished way because then you have, you know, it's like a, it's like a, you know, practicing with sculpture. You can get control of the medium and then do what you want with it. But I suggest learning video very well. Yeah. Now, on that note, if you're familiar with uh, Gary Vaynerchuk of Wine 
Lambert TV. Uh, are you familiar with it? No, no. Okay. He took his company, his father's company, a liquor store, from like $4 million in sales to $60 million in sales. And basically he did it primarily through YouTube and stuff like that. Are you familiar? I'm not. Okay. Actually. All right. I'll write that down. Yeah, I would like to. Uh, he has a book called Crush It. Actually, um, it's excellent. But basically his whole format was YouTube and using a webcam and, and very primitive audio stuff. And, yeah. And so I just, you know, hearing what you've said, just to kind of counteract and see what, what your response, but if you're not yeah. there with them. Well, you know, my response to that is, you know, simplicity always works, um, but versatility of yourself, if you're, I mean, he used his skills to do one very specific thing, and, you know, it worked. But another, let's say, it's, instead of calling it his father's company, it's called it that client, because that really, that was the relationship, right? If another client wants a different feel and you want to get the job, you know, you maybe need to rework your tool skills a little bit to be able to tool set, you know, or okay. skill set, that's what I was looking for, tool skills. I don't know. Okay. It's Sunday morning. Okay. The day <laughs> after a Saturday night. Okay. Um, okay. But uh, nonetheless, you know, okay. to be versatile. But if you have one client and that's all you do, do you have other things? And, you know, yeah, you're right. You don't need to know okay. everything. What else? Wouldn't it be easier if you wanted to study at home just to watch all of them? <laughs> I love Quentin I mean, Watch as many things as you can. You know, Survivor Man. I have to, you guys get the Discovery Channel. Or, yeah, okay. um, watch Survivor Man. You know, what's really interesting is, you know, you're talking about keeping it simple and not having a lot of people involved. And having, he does, you know, an hour-long documentary that he shoots all by himself. Not only does he take care of the production, but it's about him. It's about surviving. So he goes out into the wilderness for seven or whatever many days. Um and survives, and films himself surviving, and the techniques that he used, you can probably adapt very well, but you'll notice the sound is always great. The pictures are mixed media, but the sound is good. But watch the good things, that, that, you know, the, the programs that you watch regularly, but start to you know, question how they were put together, and, and, and think about that, because you'll, you'll end up learning a lot just by watching, watching it. You don't, you, know, you don't have to go to school. I think I might have said that, somebody else said it too. Yeah. Your title mentions going to be second to the last, but on the internet, we still have three to five minutes. Is that the longest you want your videos to keep the attention span for doing training videos? Or? It depends on how it's put together. If it's awesome, it can be an awesome 90 minute movie, <laughs> you know? Or it can be a really bad 90 second um, package of some kind. Um, it, it depends on how, how um, uh, and, you know, um, in trouble with words this morning, but how, okay. how, I, I, how, I, I, how easily sucked into that 90 seconds you can bring in? You know, are you really, um, is it exciting? Is it put together in a way that makes me want to continue watching? I mean, I could watch something for 24 hours, and if it's put together well, I'll, I'll be pulled through the whole thing. Does it make you want to watch that next 10 seconds, or do you want to change the channel and do something else? It's, it, the time is not it. It's what, what you do with the time and how you construct it. Avatar is a good example. Yeah. The, Period. There, there was there was what three hours? Yeah, yeah and, you, and it, yeah, and, and some people. <laughs> the thing is, some people loved it, These and some people didn't. You know, or like Titanic. You know, my girlfriend at the time wanted to see it five freaking times, <laughs> and and you know, I was I was done in you know the first ten minutes of it because I didn't like, just Gun, personally didn't Gun like it. Another, Which one? Gandhi, uh, the old and it, some of those big long right? epics, you know, but things in epic can be really good. But an epic can also be tough. You know, like I can watch all three Back to the Futures, but I, you know, I can't get through Pearl Harbor. I just want the fight scene. You know? yeah. <laughs> but it's not about that. the length of time; it's how you structure what's in that time span. And really, it all goes back to finding your audience and figuring out who your audience is from the get-go. That that planning stage is huge. So, you know, if you're trying to reach, you know, my demographic, you're a little bit younger. Ninety seconds might be that time span that you have. If if you're using that time really well. Um, whereas if you're looking at someone that might be interested in, in an epic about some political figure, if you're gonna, you might need to pack in a lot of information, a lot of that time, but you know that if you um, use that time wisely, they're going to go along for the ride. So I guess the answer is it depends. What else? Is that it? Closing remarks? Well, to get back.
Well, the, the wow moment should not happen at the beginning and have it go downhill from there. And when, you look at, when you look at good story structure, the, you, you want that intrigue to last throughout whatever the duration of the message is. Um, and if you were to take that structure of whatever you're trying to do, be it a, a 60 or 90 second video of some kind, try to break it into three chunks where one major thing happens in each. And you know, keeping that classic structure in mind, Act 3 is a great place for that epiphany to happen, for that aha moment. But you know, you obviously need to structure it to make it. I'm thinking the lady trampling the grapes, and it seemed like she fell, and that was the wild moment. That there was still the conversation between the anchors that, that really added a lot to it. I, I agree, and um, that could also be considered a denouement, <laughs> to use yeah. the French term, you know, where yeah, like you know, the lady fell from the grapes, and that was it. You know, and it led up to her like getting a little bit too cocky and too confident, and then like she ended up like knocking the wind out of herself. And that was good enough, but then that, that tag on the end is just like when you watch an episode of The Office and there's that 30 seconds at the very, 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 very end, right before the next show begins that you know ties up that one loose string. But um, you don't want to confuse that with the climax, which is, you know, we'll use that example, the lady falling out of the grapes. And, ah, ah, I just love the guttural sounds. She <laughs> She's okay, so we can laugh about it. Is that an answer? Yeah. 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 Thinking, thinking about that, you know, that classic story structure, it translates into everything. For a short video, does I film do well enough for this editing program? Uh, iMovie? iMovie? Yeah, and, you know, it just, it, it's tough to say yes or no, but here's what it does and here's what it doesn't do. What it does is you can cut down to a frame of, you know, a 30th or a 24th of a second. So you have, you know, the kind of precision picture-wise. Audio-wise, um, you know, you do some basic uh, level adjustment, but really you're limited to how many um, tracks you could do. So if you had music and voice that you wanted to mix together, I, I, I want to say you only have one soundtrack. I honestly, I don't use it very much, not to sound like a editing snob, but I mean, I am. I make a living off of editing, and I use real editing stuff. But you know, like I think you only have one audio track that you can do. So you can't can't have two sounds happening at once unless you. Are there other programs you can get to? Audacity? Or was it? Um, what's the free one? Audacity? Audacity. You can, I, I use that. I, it's very easy to take stuff off the internet. and um, You can construct a whole thing. And I think there's actually a way to even have the video finally edited so you can use it as a reference to you know, go back in and watch it and, and, and structure your stuff. You can't vi edit video in it, but you can right. have reference video. There's, there's two versions of that. The most recent one, personally, I just found it more complicated. There's an older version which I think is a little simpler. So if you're just in it for basic stuff, the older version is much easier to use. I've heard that too. I use I use Pro Tools just because I've, other things that I do require me to have that. So if I got it, I, I'm going to use it for simple stuff too. But Pro Tools is kind of the industry standard for sound editing. And if you don't have a budget to invest in some kind of video editing program, using iMovie or Windows Movie Maker would work for getting the picture together, but really when it comes down to mixing sound, if you have a, like a lot of needs, get a free multi-track um, you know, editing or mixing program. Free is the operative word there in Audacity. Could you discuss file formats quickly? Sure. Um, it, um, I, I like to edit um, QuickTime, the, you know, whatever the raw thing is, you know, the ProRes or um, whatever. AVI is difficult. I, I just never liked it. And uh, really, the um, to get geeky on you, the you know for a, before you put it out there and deliver it, uh, a QuickTime H two six four is great. It loses very little quality as far as a codec is concerned, but it also take, takes up a very small amount of space. You can have big HD video and send it around and move it around, and it actually is very close to the native YouTube thing. So if you're going straight to YouTube, um, it doesn't have to. Convert it again so much, but I like quick times myself. Yeah. Um, back to the API thing. Um, what about the video from my camera? I already know this. Okay. <laughs> it's going to come out of API, right? Right. Yeah. And I, mean, I don't do too much with it. It's in the movies, but I, I seem to wrestle with it, and I have a Mac. Yeah. And I'm not quite sure. Like, is there a way to change that? Problem? Yes. Or? Okay. Uh, it's called. 
think Stream Clip's really good. Um, it's MPEG uh, Stream Clip. Stream Clip is one word, M-P-E-G, uh, Stream Clip. That's a good free piece of um, media encoding and decoding software, so you can take anything in and export it as anything. So you can start to look at what your editing system works best with, and you know, it's called cleaning it. You can, you know, <coughs> cling it to that. You know, but MPEG Stream Clip is one of my favorites. It's free and does a lot. Well, if you're just trying to email to somebody. Yeah, um, you can also use it to do that. Um, to you know, but that's when you got to start understanding about codecs and um, Rohiki things. And it's nice actually to use uh, also Real Player Eleven. I'm going to get to. Um, click and make sure you download the downloader because it will automatically send web video and ask you if you want to download it. But it's got a um, real player converter as well. Make sure both of those options are installed when you get it. Um, and for like making a video just be email, do you want like an easy button for making it emailable size and encoding? You can go into the real time or real, uh, real player converter. If I was saying real time in the past, I meant real player, by the way. Um, and you can click the you know web video button and convert to, and it'll it'll make it like it's like a bubblegum version of you know some big elaborate encoder program. Both of those are good, and they're free. Cool. We went a little over. I'm sorry. I know the key the key note speaker is going to be starting soon. So if you want to get to that, I won't be offended. But if you want to stick around, I don't think anybody else. Will.